So how do you identify what block you have, iron or aluminum, in your GM truck? Well, let's find out. So today on Crazy Performance Repair, we have a Silverado here that uh, is one of the rare birds as far as the block, the engine block itself. So this particular Silverado that I'm looking at right here, it has a iron block with displacement on demand. Now I say that's rare because I don't see it very often and I've never really tried to pay attention to what vehicles I saw it in exactly. So for instance, I don't know if it's common in Tahoe's, common in Silverado's, whatever, I really just don't pay attention to it. But because of the little thing that I've come up with on my channel, as far as the solution to fix these DOD systems when they do fail. I have mentioned that there is an iron block, there is an aluminum block, and the aluminum block is going to have more damage done to it, per se, when you do the lifter repair on those blocks. Now, when I say that happens, it's, it's basically the effect that happens when you drive that punch in there, uh, that punch will actually expand the metal inside the lifter bore area and push it against the lifter. Now, it normally doesn't cause a problem unless you get really aggressive with it and it gets stuck. And I'll go ahead and show you how to fix that as well. So how do you know if you have an iron block or an aluminum block? Let's take a look. The best way to check is real nice and simple. So as I've recommended on my channel previously, you always want to check those Vlom bolts that are back there. You can see the one there in the corner. There's also one hiding behind this pulley area here. And if you pull this plastic intake tube off, they're really easy to reach and grab a hold to check how loose they are, if they're loose or not. And you can just grab them with your fingers and take a check. But anyway, so to check if you got an aluminum or iron block, you can see the obvious difference right there. You see the aluminum plate on the top, right underneath the plastic intake. You see the aluminum timing cover and then the iron block. So if you have an iron block, it's going to have that red color or it's going to be black, painted black. So all you have to do is look for either the red or painted black. The aluminum blocks are obviously going to be just the aluminum color that the timing cover and everything else, basically, this whole pulley system, everything like that is. So if you have one of those, you are one of the lucky ones. The iron blocks are by far superior for strength, longevity, so on and so forth. Uh, strength you really don't need, I guess, but it is nice if the system has failed on you and you find an iron block with a failed system, the chances of you being able to fix it are much higher because the iron block does not absorb the shock from the tool and the iron block also doesn't get squished and get damaged from the tool. So when that tool damages it, it, uh, it does clean itself up on the aluminum blocks right after you fire it up as long as it's not too stuck. But if you beat the ever-living bejesus out of that, you better be careful. You could get a stuck lifter in the other direction where it hangs the valve open. Next thing you know, you got bent valve on that cylinder. So one word of caution when it comes to that. Nobody has reported that yet to me. So I imagine all of them that have released have been able to been pushed back down. Uh, so that's one drawback to my little trick. But when in reality it saves you thousands of dollars, it's well worth the investment to give it a shot because most of these dealers are recommending a motor anyway when the lifter collapses. I don't understand that. Why are these dealers asking for replacing a motor when the lifter collapses? I just have no idea why they are doing that. But I digress. The, the block type itself, the iron versus aluminum, when it comes to a lifter release, this is where it becomes very, very important to know whether or not you're going to be having a good time or potentially a bad time doing the lift release. And so the iron blocks themselves, if you have an iron block and you have a collapsed lifter, using my lifter trick that I've come up with, I'll go ahead and throw a link for the video for that above. It's a long video. If you don't have the problem, no reason to watch it. If you don't have a misfire, no reason to watch it but I do go over some pretty heavy details. I'm sure many of you have seen that video already. So if you have to do my lift or release trick, the iron blocks, you can beat the snot out of the little tool that I make for doing the lift or release, and you're not gonna have a problem, and you're most likely gonna get the lifter released. 
so you will be very, very likely to have success releasing the lifter. Aluminum blocks, on the other hand, are a little less forgiving, successful, I don't know what word to choose, but the aluminum blocks, there is a little more possibility that you won't get the lift to release. No, that doesn't mean all hope is lost. There is still very good chance of release. It's just not as good. So instead of being like a 99% success possibility, it's more like a 80-ish percent is what I'm kind of, yeah, out of all the little things that I see, kind of figuring from myself and what I hear from other people, my guess would be it's about an 80 to 85% success rate, which is still way better than like going for the casino or something, for instance. So it's definitely better than the alternative of having to spend a ton of money fixing it to take the risk and try the little tool that I made. It's way, way cheap considering the chances of success are pretty dang high. Um, so the video that I have coming out next is a video that is for specifically the people who have tried to release it and have not had success releasing it and now the lifter is a bit tight in the lifter bore because they were desperate to release it, right? So of course, you really want this thing to release. You're beating the crap out of the tool. It's just not going to give because it's just not a good releasing unit. It's not one that wants to release, which I pretty much guarantee you it's going to be the aluminum block crowd that has this issue. And so the lifter is going to be tight in the bore. And that is what the video right here is going to be all about is how to get that thing out, why it gets stuck, all that type of gibberish that is going to be covered. So if nothing else, go ahead and hit a thumbs up on that video if you feel the ambition to go ahead and click on it. But otherwise, like, share, subscribe, and as always, I hope to see you on another video. And uh, certainly, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking things out. And if you're interested in seeing the success stories from this, be sure to go to my website, crazeperformancerepair.com, and uh, check out the testimonial little section. We took a bunch of screenshots from YouTube and Facebook and a couple other places of people telling their stories of what happened. There's some pretty interesting and funny stories in there, and uh, it's pretty cool to go ahead and check some of those out. So feel free to do that if you're interested in that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'll uh, talk to you later, and thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me, and as always, I'll see you on the next episode.